Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method and founder of Positive Excellence. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. Please note, I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram. There's been a lot of developments over the weekend. Over the weekend, the US shot down an alleged Chinese spy balloon and this particular spy satellite was literally three bus lengths in length. They couldn't shoot it down over land, they chose to shoot it down over the ocean. The US saw very strong employment numbers come out and the unemployment rate fell to 3.4%, the lowest since 1969, 53 years ago. With these things in mind, let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently down 1.88% to 22,973. Ethereum is down 2.9% 2 to 1632. We saw after the FOMC meeting last week, Bitcoin and the stock market absolutely rallied, had a bit of a pullback and Meta came out with pleasing results. Meta rallied strongly over 20%, but after the closing bell, Apple, Amazon and Microsoft came out with very disappointing earnings. These tech superweights, they're beyond heavyweight, absolutely drove market sentiment negative and we can, we can see that, we can predict what will happen with the markets by looking at Bitcoin. Bitcoin was seeking to hold up this 23,300 and 23,200 zone, this smart money buy zone. But we saw the pressure was too great and that zone cracked through. Currently, Bitcoin is 22,954. Financial markets are incredibly complex. But that complexity can be understood, but there are a lot of jigsaw pieces to put together. The labor market has been very strong in the US and Jolt's job openings confirm this. 11 million when 10.28 million was expected. Unemployment claims were much lower than expected, 183,000 versus 196,000. And what's the doozy here? Point number three and point number four. Non-farm employment change was 517,000 versus what they expected, 193,000. And of course, this lowered the unemployment rate from the expected 3.6% down to 3.4%. What is the Fed actually trying to do by raising the federal funds rate, the base interest rate? Yes, it's trying to destroy demand. Is it working? No, it's not. We can see that the monthly change in non-farm payrolls was indeed decreasing even over December, the Christmas period. But January made up for it in a big way. Did this catch the Fed off guard? Well, no, not really. If you look back at past statistics, the early months of the year are actually accompanied by huge increases in non-farm payrolls. Just bear this in mind. The statisticians working for the Fed understand this very well. We can see that the unemployment rate has returned to a 53 year low at 3.4 percent but it was when i say return it was actually the unemployment rate was coming down and down and down except for the pandemic induced recession going all the way back literally half a century we do notice something here and please remember that the pandemic induced recession was a pretty once in a century event but what we do notice is when the unemployment rate actually starts to fall down and then starts to curve up recessions generally follow after that this is not story based analysis this actually occurs time and time again what are we seeing at the moment well the unemployment rate is continuing to fall that's not necessarily a bad thing at all let's have a look at hourly wages and cpi remember the pandemic remember what happened it's really important to get a kind of a perspective on what's actually occurring we can see the consumer price index here 
actually came down and then started to increase it looks like it appears it's though it's it's actually rolled over and what do we see here leisure and hospitality workers this kind of pink line what do we see here there's a very big upsurge I call this the health risk premium because the pandemic was spread by people to other people of course the leisure and hospitality industries had to cut back severely and it was really risky for them as employees as well one thing that we can note when we look at services service providing workers this kind of deep pink <laughs> almost purple line we can see that starting to come over in terms of hourly wages and this was the thing that the fed was really concerned about was wage inflation that looks to be moderating quite well and when we look at goods producing workers that's also moderating in terms of its impact one thing that we can see when we look at payrolls by sector since January 2020 we can see the pandemic induced recession what it actually did to the leisure and hospitality industries when was the best time to actually buy stocks and what have you to do with the leisure and hospitality industry it was when things were absolutely cratering that was the bargain basement prices but it would be the opposite of when people would actually lean in and take positions we've seen this recovery and this terrific and what we see is it's approaching pre-pandemic levels and also in retail trade that topped out around just a little after 2022 but we can see the information technology sector absolutely went crazy because the pandemic made people stay home it made them work remotely and now the big companies are facing the pressure that they've employed too many people too quickly and that's why we're seeing so many headlines of layoffs in the tech sector it's really important to understand financial dynamics and when we look at payrolls by sector in January change from a month earlier we can see that leisure and hospitality have been growing in terms of payroll professional and business services next education and health services other services trade transportation and utilities growing financial activities growing information tech going down mining and logging coming up construction manufacturing oh good old state government the government really loves to employ people in state local and federal the growth in jobs is definitely a recovery story this particular chart is just a couple of days old but you can see it's already outdated as the unemployment level has actually come down even further you can see that the economic system overall is really quite strong and this is important because if you read the headlines you'll be running for the hills running to just jump under your bed if such a thing is possible when we start to see the unemployment level tick up that's when we can put on our radars that a recession could be on the cards it's not on the cards yet be careful about listening to anything other than the statistics these numbers will show you where things are going and even if they're not reported correctly as is often the case that's why we use triangulation between so many statistical sources to try and seek to uncover the truth right now the economic system is looking pretty good what about all the layoffs that are coming you can see the layoffs have been coming for quite a while and where are they occurring they're occurring mainly predominantly in the tech sector why is that because tech absolutely had a boom when the pandemic hit and now reopening is occurring what's happening to tech well it's having to normalize demand is now being absorbed by these other industries and that's really important to understand it's important to contextualize economic movements the big question why have I spent so much time on these particular statistics the answer is because it really matters 
It's important to look at macroeconomic data because of Rule 225. Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. And the stock market, the US stock market, is driven by data and earnings. If we see the largest companies in the world start to report weaker than expected earnings, we know that the risk off activity will enter the market. And that's exactly what we saw across the weekend. Bitcoin trades 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So therefore, Bitcoin is the barometer of stock market sentiment. A lot of people feel that crypto is a distinct financial market. It's not true. All financial markets are interdependent and intercorrelated. That's why many in the crypto space have basically said, I don't understand what's happening with prices across the weekend. It was pretty easy to tell what would happen to prices across the weekend because of the reported earnings. And then when we saw non-farm payroll come out with such a big boost, ISM manufacturing and the unemployment rate all doing what they shouldn't be doing. It was pretty much inevitable that the market would be reflected in Bitcoin. Literally, Bitcoin does tend to lead the stock market, especially over the weekend. And the one thing Bitcoin is really good at is recovering first. So always bear this one in mind. One thing that we see in all financial markets is called a retest. When you actually break through a smart money buy level, it's very likely to come back and try to retest it. We can see that there's been a retest here, but they can have secondary retests. And we need to look at a lot of different data points to understand whether that may be on the cards or not. But one thing that we do know, the next smart money buy level is around 22,550. So we do have support below our current price of 22,962. One thing to keep your eye on is the DXY. The DXY, when it goes up, the markets typically come down. And I say typically because it's not always. When looking at Stanfield zones, those smart money buy and sell zones, we said in Friday's episode that it looked like the DXY was going to come up and to challenge the 102 level at the absolute least. And what it actually did, it's now up at 103,099. The DXY is really critical to keep your eye on. And if we look at the current time, there's a lot of smart money selling activity above the current price, which is around the 103,477 mark up to around, well, we can't really see that. So we'll go a little bit higher to the 103,879 mark. There's a lot of sellers that will actually come into the market and seek to push the DXY down. And we can see that we've got a little bit of a weakening occurring here. After all, this is a smart money sell level. And when you have a big gap between smart money resistance levels, when the price was below, it can really shoot through those levels. And the more levels above it, the more it tends to do this kind of behavior. It tends to slow down because it's hitting a wall. When we look at the DXY at right at the moment, considering this really big uptake, all of this momentum, getting a reasonable pullback, at least to the 102,697, would be very, very constructive for the DXY. And please note, we haven't seen any real spike in the VIX, and the VIX has been coming down for a long, long time. Of course, we always have our three-dimensional strategies in play. We don't just say it's coming down. It could go flat and it could go up. What actually informs our discussion or our decision on where it could go? How far has it come? Is it running out of steam? Could it need a bit of a rest? Or what kind of selling is above it? You can see there's so many things that you need to factor in. And we talk extensively about these inside the masterclass. When we looked at gold in the previous episode, we said there was a potential for gold to come down. It has indeed come down. And why has it come down? Because as the DXY rallies up, what happens to gold? Please let me know your thoughts on this. And it's really important to do some critical analysis on how these 
different things actually relate to each other. The one thing that we note, as the DXY has rallied up, gold has rallied down. And now we see the DXY coming into some fairly heavy resistance, some fairly heavy selling action. We would anticipate that if the sellers do in fact step in with the dollar, that the DXY will start to go down. If that happens, what do we expect? And we can see this basing action through here. And this is on the two hour. You can see it just there. We can see this basing action around this smart money buy level at around 1878. And we remember that gold was flirting with 1940. That was a really, really key level. It's a strong selling level. It did manage to get above that particular level, but it's a strong gravitational pull as well. And we saw some really weird things happening with yields as well. The yields were starting to turn up basically heralding that the DXY would try to spike and it has done so. When all of these things come together you start to see how the market moves and we can predict what is actually happening with the market by or absolutely looking at Bitcoin but keeping all the other charts in mind. I made a mistake on previously discussing I meant Alphabet, not Microsoft, but Microsoft did disappoint as well. When we look at all the earnings that came out last week, they were pretty massive companies. For this week, we see Pininterest, Hertz BP, DuPont, Uber, Robinhood, Wynn Resorts, PepsiCo, Kellogg's Toyota, PayPal, Cloudflare, Lyft, Honda and a number of others. Oh, of course, Walt Disney as well. Yum Brands and Wendy's. All reporting this week. We know that Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. So in fact, if the SPY continues to come down to try to find support around that 404 level, it's currently 412 and 33 cents. If that happens, we can expect more negative pressure on Bitcoin and the crypto market. But these things can be very shortly lived as well. Just remember, price is always moving in a way. At times like this, it's very important to look into the main markets because they do give us a very good indication as to what could be happening. The standout here is, of course, the DXY rallying up and gold collapsing down. We can also see that the yields have spiked, which have caused bond prices to fall. Oil is still retreating. Junk bonds decline, signaling risk off behavior. And we haven't seen the VIX spike up just as yet. A lot of people get really perplexed about what happens inside the crypto market. Why is the market moving in a specific direction? We can start to see with the DXY starting to spike up, the VIX at very low levels, earnings not meeting, employment data being a little bit stronger than may be anticipated by the market. This is causing yields to spike as well because Fed, the Fed could potentially increase the pace of rate hikes. The markets are always forward looking. They're always trying to digest all of this economic data. The one thing that's interesting, keep your eye on gold. If US-China tensions break out, we would expect gold to actually perform quite well. Let's dive a little bit more deeply into Bitcoin. Now I want you to pretend that we hadn't spoken about all the things that we've spoken about. Look at the shorts piling into the market. Now you know why they're actually doing that. Let's just go through the thought exercise. The shorts are saying, and don't forget the shorts have unlimited downside risk. They can get wiped out plus more than their account. So they really need to think hard and long about what they're doing. <laughs> if they don't, they're gonna get wiped out. What we actually see is that the shorts are coming in. And why is that? Because the DXY is spiking, yields are spiking. This could actually indicate that the Fed could be more aggressive in future rate hikes. The job market is so strong. Unemployment is literally back to 1969 in terms of its strength. The shorts are just taking short-term advantage of these particular data points. 
But if we had not talked about things as we did, people would look at that and say, oh, the shorts are going up. I wonder why. Oh, I don't really know. But they are. Professional investors and professional traders, they don't guess. They must know what's actually occurring. Yes, it does take a little bit more time, but that time is worth it or else you find that your account gets wiped out and that's a heck of a cost. We can see over the past 24 hours, there's been 95.03 million in total liquidations across 44,408 positions, a lot bigger than normal liquidations on the weekend. And when we look to the 24 hour total liquidations, 83% were long. What about the past 12 hours? 86% long. What about the past four hours? Ooh, 72% short going the other way. What about the past hour? Increasing nearly 88% short. What is this exhibiting? The DXY is at a, at a particularly overstretched level and has got a lot of smart money sellers coming into it. That means that the DXY could well be under pressure. And we can understand how the story plays across gold and yields, but yields don't actually operate on the weekend, but Bitcoin does. And what are we seeing here that a disproportionate amount of longs were liquidated relative to the shorts? Did the shorts escape all liquidations? No, they didn't. Longs and shorts are always liquidating each other. And if 99% of longs are liquidated, but you're the <laughs> you're the one, the short that's liquidated. That is a very, very painful outcome. We can see over the past 24 hours, Bitcoin is down 1.16% and it's currently trading at 23043. The crypto market is a fantastic market because there's always something moving. And when we look at the top gainers in the past 24 hours, top 100, AGIX up nearly 30%. The graph nearly 16% up. OKB a little over 10%, followed by Renda, Leo, BAT, BSV, and FEI. The greatest losers over the past 24 hours. Top loser is Aptos 7.4%, followed by Phantom 6.99%, then GMX, LRC, Casper, LDO, CRV, and TWT. Turning to the top eight cryptos, we can see that Bitcoin over about the past week is up 0.16%. And what about Ethereum? Well, it's actually doing better than Bitcoin. It's up 0.56% over the same period of time. And what did we actually notice here as Bitcoin was selling down? You can see that selling down. That's that blue line there. Ethereum was actually showing a degree of resilience. Good on you, Ethereum. USDT, USDC, and BUSD, these are all stable coins. Do they look stable to you? Please let me know in the comments. What about BNB? BNB, as Bitcoin came down, what did BNB do? It stayed relatively strong. It's up around, well, a little over 6% for the past week, approximately. XRP, XRP was following Bitcoin's gravity and then had a bit of a hit. It was pulled back into gravitational alignment. It's currently up 0.23%. And what about ADA? Can we see that ADA is moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity? Going up and down when it goes up and down. Yes, sirree, it is definitely doing so. And the past seven days, ADA is up around 3.22%. This is now the next eight from the time we looked at it last. Doge, Matic, Solana, Dot, Litecoin, SHIB, AVAX, and the stablecoin, DAI. Let's see how it's all changed around. We can see the order is now Doge, Matic, Solana, SHIB, Dot, Litecoin, AVAX, and TRON. Bye bye, DAI. And it looks like SHIB just wants to hang out with Doge. One thing in the next top eight that is really interesting to keep your eye on is what is actually happening with SHIB. SHIB was obeying Bitcoin's gravity. But look at this. As Bitcoin came down, what did SHIB do? It's decided to invert its gravity. 
Inverters are very, very powerful, but we must be aware that they come back into alignment sooner or later. The SHIB is literally up nearly 24% over about the past week. I would suggest you keep a very close eye on what the DXY, what yields are doing, also the futures in the main market indices. And what can we see with Doge? Doge is up about 7.5% over the past week. Matic up nearly 5%. And have a look at Solana. Solana is really aligning with Bitcoin's gravity. You remember Solana before absolutely took off. It was so, so very, very strong. But now it's down about 2.27% on the week. We've talked about SHIB. DOT, what's happening with DOT? DOT was very, very weak and there was a changing of the guard and now DOT is becoming stronger and stronger. Could be really interesting to keep your eye on DOT. Always have your three-way strategy, but it's really good that when you look at these particular gravitational alignments, you try and make a conclusion out of it. What would you be prepared to put your money into and start small and scale? That's the real power of financial markets just starting small and scaling and we can see with litecoin and litecoin has a bit of a reputation of actually doing well in times like this so i would advise you to keep your eye on litecoin as well i never would say go all in and more that's an absolute crazy thing to say but unfortunately a lot of people do say it what you want to do is you want to test the water if you're not sure how cold or hot the water is, just dip your toe in. The same with financial things. We can see that AVAX was performing really, really well, but no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity, and poor AVAX couldn't either. That's why you must keep your eye on Bitcoin. But to understand Bitcoin, you must keep your eye on the main market. Hopefully, it's all stitching together for you. And we can see Tron starting to diverge as well. A little bit like SHIB. Tron can be very powerful around times like this when Bitcoin is either coming down or can't figure out where it's going. One strategy to profit from uncertainty is just step back from the news headlines. They tend to be very chaotic and they'll put you out of synchronization with the market. Just look at the stats and create a picture from the statistics from all of the different charts and say, what is this picture actually telling me? It's like gaining different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. On the weekend, I put out a video on positive excellence. Thank you, everybody, for your kind comments. And also one on the trading mindset, specifically on rules. Rules are scattered everywhere inside the masterclass, but also in terms of the coffee club. They're also in there. And from time to time, I share a random one in the public channel, and it just shows up there and nowhere else. 2023 is definitely the year of the trader. It is unfortunately not the year of the investor. So knowing how to get in and out of the market and having the right mindset is incredibly important. With this in mind, I'll just actually just do the trading mindset on the weekend and make sure you have an update on price action as well. Financial markets seek to take from the desynchronized and give the money to the synchronized. That's why I spend so much time trying to synchronize you in with the market. You're one of the elite who, who has watched to the end, so I want to actually give you a specific tip. This could actually be a game changer for you financially. The way to synchronize in with the markets is to desynchronize from news headlines. Literally, go independent of the news headlines. It's really important that you don't get swept up in the mania that is the mass media. Headlines are there to elicit an emotional response, and the best emotional response that headlines tend to grab is a fear-based one. That's why we have the CTKS Creed, which are daily positive affirmations for abundance, financial success and happiness. Every single line in this creed is meant to synchronize you in to profitability. I know the universe is designed to make me succeed. 
What you put in is what you get out. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities in life reset daily. I am worthy, I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. I always solve my problems with positive excellence. We know that better habits create a better life and we're just collections of habits. It, the personality that we think we have, it's not our personality. It's just a collection of habits. And when you become aware of this, you can transform yourself into anything or anyone you want. We know that all results come from the mind and a better mind creates better outcomes. And when it comes to financial investments and trades, you have to have a very, very strong mind or else the mass media will push you out of positions all the time. The mass media seems to exist to desynchronize investors and traders. And the year 2023 is definitely the year of the trader. Stay safe out there, my friends. Get synchronized. And I look forward to sharing with you again tomorrow. Take care and bye for now.